Welcome back to the crocheticrowd.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today's tutorial we're going to explore the Jumbo Catherine Wheel Stitch and this is a magnificent stitch. When I was a kid, 14 years of age, this is the very first project I did outside of the double crochet afghan that he did. So this was my very second afghan and what I had problems with when I was 14 is see the edging how it's nice here? When I was 14 I ended up with a really weird shape because I kept losing track on what to do on the ends. So I'm gonna be going through this tutorial slowly to be able to educate you on how to keep in balance. Now the reason why I screwed up is that I had three colors in my version when I was 14 and because I only have two here it's very obvious that you have one and then the other one sitting on top. But when I had three colors what was happening is that um, I was kind of going in on an angle because I was kind of missing out on the last ones that are coming around and that was really simple. Also what I had in that version is that I had these really god awful knots. So I'm going to be showing you, I've left it in here just for tutorial reasons, how to bury these in and once you get them buried in there are tips on being able to change colors so that you don't have any really weird knots on the outside of your project and then you could just follow it along with the border. So without further ado I'm going to show you how to do this. You can do any size project because I'm gonna load you up with some tips on how to make this so it's standard. And what you'll also notice at this point too, see how there's three burgundy circles in a row and then they, they just match. When I was a kid what was happening for me is that I would have it so that it was off, it was out of alignment. So I would have half this side and then I would have a full yellow on this side and it basically is just because where I was starting with it, it didn't make sense. So today's tutorial I'm gonna arm you with that information so that you can have balance just like you see so that each one of the rows looks like it's actually completed from start to finish without it looking pretty wonky. So without further ado let's get started right now. I'm going to load you up with tips before we begin the actual crochet element to it because I really want you to pay attention to the spokes. So as a child I realized that I was screwing up on the edges. What was I doing wrong and what I found with myself is that do you see how that there's these trebles here? You got one, two, three and four and basically what was happening on the other side is that I was maybe putting in five. So I got one, two, three and four. So what I want you to do is that when you're looking at the edges, this line here is kind of like the horizon of water. Okay, just visualize it like this. So if you have four spokes that are coming down one, two, three and four, that means that there should be four spokes going up. Now when you go to start a new row just like so, the chaining of this counts as one of the spokes. So when I was a child I would chain up and then I would add another one and then I would add the wrong so the wrong number because I was not counting that first one as being one of the spokes. So if you can look at this line right here as a mirror or like a horizon of water and you can match what is going on below here then it will just completely work out. Also when you're in this particular stage we have two single crochets right here and two here. I've, again I visualize that the middle section is like water so what is happening down here should actually equal up here. So when I'm teaching this and I've seen people do this what happens is that they may be, instead of putting two here they'll add three and then they're gonna start seeing their whole afghan go wonky as a result. So keeping with the idea of water of the horizon. So you have this line coming through. There's your horizon. You have this line right here coming through. That is your horizon. And we have seven, one, two, three, four, five, six and seven on top. So therefore we should have one, two, three, four, five, six and seven on the bottom. So again it's a horizon. Now when we're working on this particular project, I've done it before and I've absolutely hated it. In or, this kind of project looks better if the entire circle is the same color. So there's transitional yarns that are out there and what will happen by the time you get back here is that the, it'll transition into a different color line. So therefore this circle right in the middle looks kind of broken. It doesn't look solid. This is a better one that if you're going to do variegated for example do the same type of variegated but not in a slowly transitional uh, kind of yarn and that it will work out just perfectly. So again there's what it looks like as a whole and really quite simple. So the reality is is that you want to make it in any size that you can and the reality is is that you have to keep the same amount of stitches in balance so that you can end up with the right amount as you're going all the way across and I'm gonna arm you with that right next as we start to do the chain. 
So let's begin. I'm going to create a slip knot just like so and let's put our crochet hook in. I'm gonna use a size six millimeter size J. You can use any size yarn that you wish any size hook as long as it balances with each other like it's a suggested that it matches. Now in order to keep the the jumbo version in balance that there are ten stitches per set. So let's uh, discuss that in just a sec. So uh, what I want you to do is that I want you to chain ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. This here you'd have to determine is it big enough? If you're working on an afghan is this enough? If not then you'll do another ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine and ten and then basically you decide again is that big enough? Yes or no? And then you just keep going. So you can lay this uh, chain down on a bedspread if you wanted to just to figure out if it's big enough or not. So I'm gonna do another group of ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. Now here's the thing. Once you decide okay this is long enough for me you don't wanna go any further you have to add two more chains. So once you get to the chain the chain that you want for the size you just need to add two more. So one and two. So you had groups of ten and then you add two at the very end. So let's begin our first row and the first row what we're going to do is establish the uh, basically the horizon of your stitches. So we're gonna start off and we're gonna immediately start doing like the sun coming up over the horizon and basically you'll start off with a flat edge. Now you can come back afterwards and do a border and do the other side if you wanted to have like a really a kind of a ruffling kind of idea to finish off that. That's something that you can decide afterward. So let's say begin and it's just starting off really simple. I want you to go second chain from the hook. So we cut one here, go two, turn it over and get that back hump and I want you to single crochet into this stitch and into the next just like so. So now this is the basically the one side. So now we're gonna start doing the horizon. So we're gonna start doing this, uh, the wheels. So we're going to be doing trebles today and we're gonna be skipping over three. One, two, three. Go to the fourth and I want you to treble. We're gonna wrap and wrap going into the fourth and I'm still going on the back only, the back hump and I'm going to just treble. Okay, so basically trebling is the next step up from double crochet so I'm not speaking any kind of foreign terms. So we're gonna wrap and wrap going into the same one and we wanna put a total of seven trebles into that same stitch to create that, that horizon coming out, out of the water. So one and two Okay, one and two. That's how I do it in my head. I just go one and two as I wrap to make sure I wrapped it twice. Okay, so I have a total of four so far. I want a total of seven. Like so. And one and two. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six and we got seven. So you're gonna come back down onto the line now and you're going to count over to the fourth one. So you've got a one, two, three. Those are the ones you're gonna skip and you're going to single crochet into the fourth one again on the back hump. So one and we're going to single crochet for a total of three times. So that was one and we're gonna go into the next chain for two and the next chain for three. And then we're going to start another horizon wheel like so to begin again wrap and wrap and we count over and we skip over three one two three go to the fourth and we're just going to put in again another seven trebles and I'm gonna speed up a little bit. Okay so you gotta get your seven in there. So the difference of the um of the regular size versus this one is that the chain counts are different as far as the groups because the trebles are extend further over so therefore you need more stitches in the in the chain. Um, but also that the heights are different by using the trebles as well. So I have one, two, three, four, five, and six and this will be the seventh. 
coming back down onto the line. So we just skip over to the fourth. So one, two, three, go to the fourth. And we're going to single crochet again. One, two, and three. And let's do another wheel. Okay, so we're gonna wrap and wrap. So we're gonna skip over to the fourth. One, two, three, go to the fourth right there. And I figured out the math to keep this stuff in balance. And if it's wrong for you, you can always fake it right at the end if you're off by one if you really have to. Especially if you're doing the size of an afghan. And I don't think I wrapped it enough there. So I'm gonna wrap and wrap. Okay, wrap and wrap. Wrap and wrap. Wrap and wrap. You notice I'm not counting them. I kind of visualize it and I eyed it one, two, three. It's easier just to kind of do a whack of them and just kind of just visually quickly look. I have my seven in now and now I'm going to skip over to the fourth, one, two, three. And guess what? I have two stitches left on the, on the chain. So one single crochet and two will take me right to the very end. And that will conclude off that line. And then basically here's what you have. So you have a nice good balance of the circles on either side. And now we're going to fasten off at this point. So let's uh, learn how to do that. It's easier to fasten off at this point than it is to try to carry your yarn. At this point it looks cleaner and the stitches look better balanced. So I just kind of wrap it again, pull it through and just kind of pull it tight just like that. And I'm just gonna leave that long because I'm gonna show you how to bury that into the next line. We're about to start the second line and the second line basically we're going to be filling in the gapping space that exists in between all of the uh, of the the humps that you guess that you have in the Catherine wheel stitch. Now what you're going to realize very quickly here, see the center point right here? I'm going to be referring to that as the uh, kind of like the the hidden center point because you can't immediately start here and just hopefully get over here. So when we're going to be working on it, I'm going to be giving you instruction because you have to make sure that your center points stay in balance. So without further ado, I'm going to create a slip knot with another color yarn because this one will be a complete circle. And we're just gonna insert it onto our hook just like so. This is where we have finished off and I wanna leave on that straggler and I wanna turn my work. So now we're going to take the hook and insert it into the final stitch just like that. Okay and I wanna make sure my stragglers are in check that I have them under control and I'm just going to connect the yarn like that. So now I want to chain four. One, two, three and four. This fourth here is the center point of this semicircle that we're going to be creating along the edge. So remember what I said in the very beginning that we had on the spokes that we had four with the reflection line. This is one of the four. So we're going to create a, a, um, more spokes and we need a total of four of these. This is the one so we need three more. So we're gonna wrap and wrap coming in to the next one here which is the single crochet. It doesn't matter but it's the next one and we're going in. We want the stragglers to stay on top of the line so that we can bury them and trap them so you don't have any ugly knots on the outside of your work. So you're just going to pull through two and two and hold. You do not wanna finish that stitch because we're creating a semicircle. So we're going to wrap and wrap again keeping that stragglers on top going into the very next one available to you. Wrap and wrap and pull through two and two and hold and then do it again like that. Pull through two and two and hold. So now you have your four spokes that we talked about but we need to create that spoking effect. So what we have to do is that we have to yarn over and pull through all four of these and then we're going to chain four. The reason why we're chaining four is that we need to start way over here but we, our hook is over here. So we have to earn our way to get over there so we have to chain four. So one, so it kind of locks it, two, three and four and then we immediately come in on top of the semicircle. This here, right here as it lays down is your horizon line that I referred to of the, of the water line I suppose. And so we're going to single crochet keeping those stragglers down on top again and we're going to single crochet for three in a row. 
and this is the very top of the semicircle that is existing below. So what's happening in here is that you have seven spokes here. These three are in the middle of the seven. So if when you pull it apart these two on both sides are empty. It's the three middle ones. So what has to happen now is that we're going to fill in this tire gap with some uh, a semicircle. The problem is that I cannot start right where I am and I've already just explained that to you that we have to earn our way to the middle of that circle. So to get the, to this one is that we chain three. One, two and three. Okay, so we did three and now we're going to start collecting these stitches and we have to create seven spokes using every one of these as we go. So we're gonna wrap and wrap and I'm going to let the stragglers go in behind. I've got it buried enough along the stitches that I can hide it and we're gonna pull through two and two and hold. And we keep doing that collecting our stitches. You will have a total of eight uh, loops on your hook even though there's you're making seven spokes. The reason for that is that that first one that we started out with counts as one of them. Okay, so that's why there will be eight loops. So what I do is that I keep doing this until I can see that there's eight. And you get a really good idea once you get into the rhythm of this that when you're getting close to the eight that you look for it. So I'm getting close now. Okay, pull through two and two and hold. And what I do is, do is that I take my finger and I say, okay, there's four, there's four, easily done. So what we're going to do then is we're going to create the center point, yarn over, pull through everything, just like so, and then we're going to chain four, just like we did over here. So one, which locked it, two, three, and four, and now we're coming on top of the center of the other one. So let's just single crochet the next three, one, two and three and we're going to do the semicircle again. So let's begin one, two and three and we're going to collect them with the trebles going all the way till we get eight loops onto our hook. Now some people do not like to do treble crochet. In this one this is what makes the afghan grow really quickly. So even though it's kind of extra, uh, an extra twist as you wrap, the reality is, is that it will grow a lot faster as a result of doing so. So it's a kind of a sacrifice. So I can see that I have seven on there. See how I just instantly grabbed four with my fingers just to kind of quickly count. And I want a total of eight loops. There you go. And now I'm gonna pull through everything. And then I have to chain four. So one, which locked it, two, three, and four. And now we're back on the center point on the top of the next one. So we're three single crochets. Okay, and now we're going to do the semicircle coming down on this side. So we're going to repeat exactly what we did over here, but this time watch what we're going to do. We're going to start off like it's a major circle. Okay, because we have to keep balance. So we're gonna go one, two, and three. And this one does not count as any of the spokes. This is the horizon line. This is the water line. So we're going to only collect four because there's only four left. This is where people screw up the most. Where they just, um, they either do not do enough or they miss that final one. Or they put in an extra of course. So you will have a total of four spokes. This water line does not count. Okay, you'll have a total of five loops pull through everything and then you're just going to chain one just to lock it and then that would be the conclusion of that. So this is basically what you have done and basically you have a semicircle on both sides and it's still in balance. So let's begin the next row which is easiest one of the two. Let's turn our work and we're going to begin the next row which is the easiest one of the two. To begin we're going to chain four. One, two, three and four and we're immediately going to come back or straight down into this piece. This counts as one of the spokes so if there's four spokes this is one of, of four. We are going to treble three more times. And we're gonna finish those stitches off completely because we do want it to kind of fold down on top of it to create the other side of the circle. So in one that we're collecting our, our spokes, the other one we're just simply just crocheting as normal. Remember see this is the center line. We do not count that and we immediately just single crochet into the next single crochet that's available to you. So we're gonna do those for three. 
and then we immediately start off here. So unlike the bottom one where we had to chain uh, three to get to the middle point, we just immediately start trebling because it's gonna create that horizon going up over the top. So we're just going to just immediately treble right into the center point of that circle and we're gonna keep doing that. And you want a total of seven of these. Okay, so I got six so far and then I got seven. Once you get your seven you're done. Okay, and then you immediately just go into the uh, the next single crochet that's available. So it kind of, so it basically what it's done is that it, you started over here, it's pulled it toward the center and then you immediately went and did a single crochet which pulled it over and then you had three single crochets total on this side. Let's do that again. So we have the next one immediately coming into the center point. Okay, and you're going to treble again seven more times. So when you're doing this uh, what's going to happen is that each one of the um, rows or basically circles has two uh, lines on it in order to complete. You'll always be changing color on one side of your project as a result of it. That doesn't really mean much uh, just giving you an indication that we can see that there's stragglers coming out over here. We're always gonna have the stragglers coming out in the same spot on both sides or on this uh, particular project. So we have our seven. We immediately single crochet into the next three. And now we have the four spokes here. We have to create the four spokes on the top. So you'll notice that the inside edge will always kind of look like it's indented when you're doing the semicircles on the very outside like so. Don't worry about it. When you do a border on your project it will actually balance right out and it does settle down anyway. So we're doing a total of four. We remember that that horizon line is there. We do not worry about it and once you have that done we just immediately fasten off. So we have our four spokes here. We have our four there and we're just going to cut our yarn like so and just pull it through like so. And then essentially here what we're just gonna do is pull everything tight. This is what we kinda went over and we can safely cut that at this point so that they're out of the way and then buried into your work. So just turn your work just like so and now we're going to begin again but this time we're not gonna start off with doing a semicircle going down. We're going to be starting off as if we're in the top of the circle in a regular space. So we're gonna be doing that next. Okay, I want you to start the next yarn. Get a slip knot going and just put your hook in and let me explain. So what's going to happen here is that we cannot start off with a semicircle on the outside because you already have one going on. So when you're looking at the original sample just like so, you have a big semicircle here but then look at this. You have a little section like here and this is where we are in the project. So there's really uh, four ways of starting your your lines basically and you can either start it like this or like this. Okay, so there's like four different lines. That's what I kind of meaning here. So we're basically at the point where we're doing the, the, the single crochets along the side. So what we're going to do right where we fastened off, we're going to fasten on to the pink with the pink here. Keeping those stragglers in check and we immediately just pull through and through. We are going to chain one and then single crochet into that exact same stitch. And that's one of two single crochets that you need along the top. So we need to single crochet into the next. And making sure you keep that stragglers in check here. So now we're ready to do the basically what you've already done with the green here. You're ready to do it at this point. So you've prepared the edge and now it's ready to go. So to begin just like you already know with the green that you've just did down over here you're going to chain three. One, two and three and you're going to collect. So you're just gonna treble and then just start and you want a total of eight loops on left on your hook. You do not want to finish them of course. You are collecting them to make the underside of the circle. And you see how I'm just making sure those stragglers are down on top. It's kind of a pain to start off rows like that but that's the best way to hide it in and not have to get a darning needle at the end to kind of hide in your ends 
as you go. So you're actually saving time by doing so. So you want a total of eight I, uh, loops. I can see that they have six. And this one would be number eight loops. So it's, so basically I have the spokes one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then the eighth loop is from the original. And we're just gonna pull through everything and then chain four. So one is to lock it, two, three, and four. And then we immediately come down on top. So I'm gonna get rid of the stragglers out of the way and we immediately come down on top of the next circle that's available to you. So you can see it's just, it's the next stitch in alignment. So there's three there and then we start the next one. So one, two, and three and then we start collecting them again. We want a total of eight. So I'm gonna speed up. So a very easy stitch. Um, I actually screwed it up uh, in, in my original when I was 14 and I kept screwing it up throughout the years uh, because I was actually uh, miss um, looking at not doing the chaining when I first started each one of the circles. Created a completely different look and it made the afghan extremely um, tight but it actually because it looked good I didn't even worry about it because I didn't even know I was doing anything wrong. So we have eight loops pulled through. Okay so we're gonna chain four. So one is to lock it, two, three and four and then coming back down on top of the next one for three more. Okay so let's do the final circle. So one, two and three and we're ready now to lock it or sorry to get another big circle in here. I'm just clearing some yarn on the side here and we're going to wrap and wrap. I'm going in and we're going to collect our eight loops. So we're making seven spokes. Okay. Okay, so I got four. I can see three, so I got one more. And this should leave you with the total. If you've done everything right, once you get through, you should have two uh, stitches left, which I do. So we're just gonna pull through everything. Okay, we're going to chain four. One is to lock it, two, three, and four. And we have two single crochets left here. This is where people screw up. They forget about this piece here. We want to make sure we're going in the top of the beginning chain like so. We do not wanna fasten off at this time. We wanna keep that pink going so we just immediately turn our work and begin our next row. To begin this row, very simple. It's kind of basically like we did with the half semicircle here. It's exactly what we've done actually. So what we're going to do, just chain one, single crochet into that first one and single crochet into the next. So we're just matching what is already there and then we immediately start then the semicircle going up over top. So we're just going to treble immediately just going right into the center and we're going to do a total of seven spokes. Okay and you wanna continue that and then basically once you get your seven in you're going to then single crochet your three and then immediately start your seven and that's how you do this. So every time you start off with the one side or the other so either it's either a semicircle or it's a single crochet. This is exactly how you would do it. So hopefully this gives you an understanding on how to make a jumbo Catherine wheel stitch. You'll find it really quite fabulous and easy and uh, once you get onto this you might actually make more than one because this stitch is absolutely fabulous. Till next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the crochet crowd.com. <laughs>